animals. They're cute, they're cuddly, and sometimes they even pass legislation. <laughs> but sometimes animals can also be a bit much. So to help us cover the big animal stories in the news, we turn to our own daily show animal expert, my Australian cousin, with a new segment we call <laughs> These Animals. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, I used to like animals. That's why I became a zoologist or whatever this hat's for. Until one day, my animal hero, Steve Irwin, got stabbed in the heart by a bloody stingray. Everyone says stingrays are harmless, but try telling that to Steve. You can't because of a murdering stingray. So that's why I say, <laughs> these animals. <laughs> First on my shit list, polar bears. Yeah, the myth about these four-legged cotton balls is that they're always playing in the snow and drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> but in reality, they drink Pepsi and can slap a man's head clean off. <laughs> and recently, they've been invading Russian cities. The unusual invasion causing a state of emergency that has families afraid to leave their homes in one Russian town. It's a wild scene. Hungry polar bears and their cubs rummaging through a landfill even wandering down a hallway. In this small Arctic town, they've counted at least 52 bears. With sea ice disappearing, the endangered animals are spending more time on land. Oh, these bloody poor Russians. As if your winters weren't hard enough, how about we throw in some starving camouflage killing machines? <laughs> these animals! <laughs> I hate polar bears for the same reason I hate pandas, right? They're very cute, but very deadly. They come in looking like a teddy bear, then they rip you apart! <laughs> Yeah, getting attacked would be like, oh, so cute. Ah, I'm dying, but so cute, I'm cute dying. <laughs> Nobody would help you because they think it's adorable. Too busy filming on their sillies. Everyone's like, oh, now the bear's eating his legs. Oh, look how cute it is. <laughs> Meanwhile, down in South America, entire villages are getting overrun by one of Mother Nature's nastiest critters, the hippopotamus. A brief glimpse of a giant native only to Africa, now running wild in Colombia. The story of the hippo starts here, via Napolis, the former estate of Pablo Escobar, who in his heyday had four hippos smuggled here for his private zoo. It's not uncommon to spot a 3,000-pound hippo walking around town. The hippos are very dangerous. The hippos are territorial species. In Africa, hippos cause more human deaths than any other large animal. Yeah, what's worse than hippos? I'll tell you what, cocaine hippos. <laughs> Evidently, Pablo Escobar got so bored smuggling dope, he needed another challenge. Ah, drugs are too easy. Bring some illegal African land whales. That's right, I'm a South African doing an Australian accent, doing a Colombian accent. Take that, Meryl Streep! Take that! <laughs> so now... So now old Pablo's been dead 25 years, but his hippos are still running around Colombia, ruining the ecosystem, and worse, causing traffic jams these animals. <laughs> and by the way, kids, if you do see a hippo, leave the bloody thing alone. Just steer clear. They are the most lethal animal in Africa. That's right, even deadlier than the AIDS lions. <laughs> Trevor would confirm that, but he's gone to the loo. Anyway, <laughs> the thing about these giant unrideable pig horses is that they're pretty hard to get rid of. The hippos were then allowed to just roam free. Yes. And they Basical. had... Basical. They had offspring. Happened. How many are there now? Uh, about 50 hippos or... Or, or more. Uh, or more. There's a huge area, and uh, that's a paradise for the hippos. Paradise because they have no predators and ample food and water. Oh, blimey, those are some hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> and they went from four to 50 of them, so there are also some horny, horny hippos, <laughs> which, by the way, is the R-rated version of the game. Those aren't marbles in their mouth, mate. Look, people have to stop bringing animals to places where they don't belong. Not for the animals' sake. You know me, f*** these animals. But because every time they get brought somewhere, they end up screwing things up for us humans. Like the story out of Texas. The CBS Houston affiliate, KHOU, says a tiger was found inside an abandoned home. Authorities received an anonymous call yesterday from people who had gone into the home and, yes, discovered a tiger. 
they were going to go into this vacant house to smoke marijuana, and they discovered uh, they were greeted by a large tiger. He's in a rinky-dink cage that could easily bust open. It was it was secured with a uh, nylon strap. Now this story pisses me off the most because that tiger ruined those people's high. <laughs> Just imagine you go into an abandoned house to smoke weed and then you see a bloody tiger. You're probably like, what kind of weed is this? <laughs> house cat looks like a tiger. So then you go, let me pet the cat. But guess what? It's a bloody tiger, mate. So it rips your arm clean off. Ah, you got one arm. And the worst part is that's the arm that had your joints in it. <laughs> these animals. Another thing that bothers me about the story is who moves out of their house and forgets their tiger? What Bogan is leaving the house like, oh, keys, wallet, phone, what am I missing? Oh, yeah, my 300-pound jungle monster. So to sum up, folks, hide your rubbish from bears, never let drug lord hippos have unprotected sex, and you now have a second reason not to go into abandoned houses. The first reason's pedophiles. And don't forget, <laughs> these animals. Back to you, Trevor. Wow. Thanks, Australian Trevor.